Namaste and thank you for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to speak about the root cause of aging as per Ayurveda and recent findings in science. So before I begin, I just want to explain the different kinds of fats because they are very important to the process of aging which is happening in our body. So we have the polyunsaturated fatty acids which are the PUFAs and we have the saturated fats. So you would, in your polyunsaturated fatty acids, you would have vegetable oils, seeds, nuts that have that you're eating sort of raw, fish oil, algae oil, uh, omega-3 supplements. These are all very high in polyunsaturated fat. On the other hand, you have saturated fat, which is your butter, ghee, uh, olive oil, coconut oil, even animal fat is a saturated fat. So why are fats important? Uh, fats get oxidized in the body. This is the first step in a process called lipid peroxidation. So lipid peroxidation is the root cause of aging. And lipid peroxidation is a process whereby we take in certain fats and these fats start to get oxidized within our body. Now the rate at which a fat gets oxidized is different. So no, no fat is made the same. And so when you have your saturated fats like coconut oil, ghee, butter, they don't get oxidized as quickly. They take a far longer time to get oxidized. Whereas if you are having uh, polyunsaturated fats like vegetable oils, algae oil, fish oil, soya oil, all of these kind of oils which are high in polyunsaturated fat, they oxidize much quicker in the body leading to hastening of the process of aging. An easy way for, for each and every one of us to just verify this is to go back into your into your kitchen. I'm sure you'll have, probably you'll have some vegetable oil lying around and you'll also have maybe butter or, or coconut oil. And you put on two pans and you put the vegetable oil, the polyunsaturated fat in one and um, the saturated fat in the other. You start heating up the oils to about almost the smoke point to, a, to when it's sort of boiling. And then you switch off the gases and then you come back to it once it's cooled down maybe 20 minutes later half an hour later and again you switch on the gas you let the oil sort of come to a heat again and you keep repeating this process maybe five or six times in in the day and what you'll notice is as you do it more and more times the oils that are rich in poly and saturated fats like vegetable oils they'll tend to go more rancid they sort of start to go bad much quicker whereas your ghee butter they stay good for a long time. You can keep heating, cooling, heating, cooling, and, and there's no problem. It doesn't affect it. Our body is also at this sort of 38 degrees Celsius temperature, which is quite, quite warm. It's quite hot. And so these oils, as they go through our body, are also getting hot. Through this process of heating, the, the polyunsaturated fats actually get oxidized in the body much, much quicker. And this process of oxidation is also hastened by what the second step of lipid peroxidation, which is oxidative stress. So oxidative stress is when your body is under some kind of stress. This stress could be due to carb restrictions. This stress could be due to our work, due to all kinds of um, any kind of situation that is stressful for us. It could be even a, a very intensive workout can lead to oxidative stress. Now, when we have too many polyunsaturated fats, there's a lot of fats being oxidized in the body and you couple that with an increase in the oxidative stress in our body, sometimes for some of us it can be chronic stress. This combination is what is deadly which is leading to more and more aging. And the third step in lipid peroxidation where the cell membranes start to break down. And when the cell membranes start to break down, the mitochondria of the cell is affected. So the mitochondria, as many of y'all would already know, is the powerhouse of the cell. It's what is creating energy, vitality. ATP production, adenotriphosphate, is basically the compound that is leading to cellular energy. This compound and this the cellular membrane, the mitochondria, are all affected by lipid peroxidation process. So now the cells can't produce energy the way they were supposed to produce energy. And so what we have is a drop in our energy levels, a drop in our vitality. The fourth step on this process of lipid peroxidation is disease. So ultimately the breaking down of the cell membrane leads to disease. And one of the easiest ways to spot 
whether we have whether this lipid peroxidation process is already underway on a large scale in our body is to look for lipofuscin now lipofuscin is a pigmentation that happens in the cells and it also gives that pigmentation on the surface of our skin so we can easily see whether the cells underneath the surface of the skin are also affected or not so a lot of the times you'll find in especially elderly people you'll find a lot of lipofuscin at the back of their hands a discoloring at the back of the hands a discoloring at the back of the at the upper back even sometimes younger people have this also when we have when young people are born or sort of grow up with freckles as they call it the freckles which they say are natural or hereditary it's often times in households that are using a lot of um are using a lot of fish oil or vegetable oils and this is not actually a natural phenomena sometimes it can also be because the mother when the child was in the womb of the mother the mother had a diet which was very rich in polyunsaturated fat and the mother's cells themselves had a lot of this lipid peroxidation happening within them another indicator of lipid peroxidation is when you go out into the su- into sunlight and you ha- get these sun spots so when the sun reacts with cells in our body which have the cell membrane broken down so the polyunsaturated fat is is released into the blood it's another kind of stress so being in too much of sunlight when we have too much of lipofuscin too much of polyunsaturated fats in our diet is actually harmful for us so that's another way to know whether whether you have too much lipofuscin and pufa in your body so how do we get rid of this pufa one is to shift all our diet away from the polyunsaturated fats stop eating the um raw nuts raw seeds if you need to eat them you need to cook them roast them um or soak them for a long period of time don't eat them raw also stop having fish oil algae oil all your vegetable oils soy soy bean uh, avoid soy bean tofu all of these lead to a, an increase in this process of lipofuscin so you need to stick with your ghee butter for cooking coconut oil olive oil uh, these are much better much healthier also supplementing with vitamin e vitamin e has been shown to uh, greatly reduce the damage that is caused on our cells by polyunsaturated fats it sort of um annuls that so often times in our modern li- lifestyle if we go out we want to get a meal outside they are often times cooking in, in vegetable oil so there's no way to avoid the vegetable oils and in that case it's always good to have a a supplement of vitamin e which you can take whenever you have when you whenever you are ingesting a high a high dosage of polyunsaturated fat apart from that of course exercise really helps doing a yoga practice or any other form of movement then of course you have the beta carotenoids the sort of the all the bright vegetables uh, all of these are also really good to to sort of counteract the effects of uh, lipid peroxidation and also of course turmeric always starting the day with a warm turmeric drink uh, adding lots of turmeric into your food as you cook the food um ideally of course not having turmeric raw because it doesn't when it's raw it doesn't have the same impact as when it is cooked i'm going to stop here for today i hope you enjoyed this piece of information do stay tuned for a lot more information uh, dietary tips exercise how we can find complete balance in a world that is getting more and more polluted by the day Thank you so much namaste